We are back inside the O'Reilly booth here at Velocity 2011, and I'm joined now by John Rezig, Dean of Open Source and Head of JavaScript Development at Khan Academy. John, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So what were your initial goals for jQuery? Well, when I was first working on it, I was uh, a college student at the time, and I was building a number of different like web applications that I wanted to use. Um, and it was just incredibly aggravating for me to have to deal with all these cross-browser issues all the time. Sure. So I was constantly just, you know, I, I wanted to develop my app in Firefox and to have it just work in Internet Explorer, sure. and like it just wasn't possible. Right. Um, so there was existing frameworks. Like at the time, there was like Prototype and MokiKit, and uh, I think Dojo was just starting to come around as well. And but none of them, um, I, I felt that they didn't have the exact you know, you know, level of dedication towards fixing the bugs that I wanted, and they didn't have the API that I want. I wanted something that was nice and terse. Yeah. In short, that just could let me write and, and get done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why do you think it's caught on like it has? I, I think it's like a combination of that. But, but I mean, when, when we first, uh, when I first released it, 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 uh, it was the only JavaScript library with documentation. Yeah. Um, and so like I've been putting a lot of work into documentation, <laughs> into community, yeah. into all the things surrounding the code. Obviously, the code has to be good as well. Sure. But it's incredibly important to ship. A, a good quality code base, uh, and 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 you know, again, have have the docs, have, have the forums, have uh, you, know, you know, make sure that people can have their questions be answered. So does that mean the the best practice there, the launch checklist, is to make sure that you have more than just good code? I, I would say absolutely. Uh, I mean, because you you kind of have to put yourself in the shoes of someone who's trying to use your thing. Right. Um, you have to be really empathetic there. You have to say, okay, someone who's just starting, what are they actually trying to do? And you know, mm. if they hit a stumbling block, what are they, you know, what are they, where are they going to go? Right. And so, at least for the first year or so, Jake, right? Like, uh, I set up a mailing list, and I was sitting there every day answering support questions. Right. And you have to be willing to sit there and get your hands dirty, and because uh, not only does it, uh, uh, you know, foster a, a good community, but it also, you know, uh, makes your users feel good because you know they're getting their questions answered. It, it goes, it goes sure. well. What, what challenges have you faced with jQuery Mobile? Um, so I mean, specific to that, I mean, you know, backwards compatibility, that type of thing. Oh, I mean, it's, it's been a it's been a very rocky adventure. <laughs> like, it? Yeah. I mean, so I mean the. Uh, so so we yeah, we set out to do a jQuery mobile because we wanted to make it so that people could build, uh, a, a, you know, uh, build web apps, and, and just you know you know in a way that was sane mm. on mobile devices. And <laughs> and the problem is is that on like if you look at desktop browsers, it's. The problems that you encounter, you know, you have the cross-browser issues, um, which is obviously a concern. Uh, it's same concern on, the, on, on mobile, but to an even greater degree, because there are more browsers and they're even weirder. Uh, yeah. So you, you, you have, for example, older BlackBerry devices, and those have a browser which doesn't exist on desktop browsers. And so there's a whole separate set of quirks there that you may not understand. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have things like Opera Mini, which aren't, it, Opera Mini isn't even a, 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 a real browser. It, it's actually just a proxy browser. So I mean, it, it, that has a whole set of issues with yeah. it as well. So like, what we really wanted to try and create something that was uh, going to make it really easy to build websites and web applications uh, while taking into account all this uh, cr uh, cross-browser compatibility. So you're probably sick of being asked this, but do you have a sense of when the beta is coming uh, out, or the uh, 1.0? Point point uh, beta is on Monday. Um, and um, the 1.0, we're shooting for uh, the summer. Excellent. I mean, uh, we definitely want it out in time uh, um, for the jQuery conference in uh, October. Okay, great. So shifting gears a little bit, it's kind of a broad question, but is JavaScript in a golden age right now? Is it? Actually, well, I think I, well, it's probably a prolonged golden age. I think, <laughs> I, I mean, I think, you know, the golden age started probably what 2005 yeah. when uh, you know Ajax really yep. started to take off yep. and became Opened very buzzwordy. Um, I, I, thankfully, I think a, a lot of the buzz has died, uh, but but it's been replaced by people realizing that you can't build a web application without understanding JavaScript. Right. It, it, JavaScript is a fundamental aspect of any sort of web development you do today. Uh, and any sort of web application or mobile application, or, it, it, it's everywhere. And so what I, what I think is, is excellent is, um, you know, it, I think people are just finally realizing just how critical it is. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I felt this for a long time, and, and I, I, I totally foresee that JavaScript uh, is going to be around for a very long time. Right. 
On, on the performance side, how do you see JavaScript evolving over the next two years or so? Well, I mean, historically, browsers have been getting you know, much, much faster at uh, uh, just straight JavaScript performance. Um, I, I wish I knew how it's going to improve in the next two years. I, I'm hoping that it, there's going to be a lot of effort being paid, uh, be paid to uh, improving DOM performance. You know, making sure that the APIs that we have are the best possible APIs, that they're fast, and that um, help improve you know, the libraries, help make it so that uh, you know, users don't have to ship so much code uh, uh, down to the browser. You know, so, so stuff like that, I, I, and I, I, it's, it's, a lot of it's up to the, you know, the browser vendors to make sure that they start landing some good code there. Sure, so last question for you, it's kind of an odd question, but I'm always interested in how and why people gravitate toward the languages that they gravitate mm -hmm. toward. So what was it about JavaScript that struck a chord for you? Mm -hmm. I guess when I was first looking at JavaScript back in 2004, uh, I, was, you know, I was going for my computer science degree and I've been playing with a ton of languages, you know, uh, uh, Java and Lisp and Perl and C++ and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and like I, I was working on a web application that was, uh, uh, um, that had, I had to do some JavaScript and I started to play around with it and I, 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 was, I really liked how, you know, object oriented it was. It was a very clean object oriented style, but, uh, very, but in a way very different from Java. At the time, that's what I was most familiar with. So yeah, it was really, uh, I, I just I started to really enjoy it and really get in. And then the functional aspects of the language are really what tied me in. Uh, because being able to have that functional aspect allowed you to write really expressive code. Um, and I think that's that combination that makes it such an excellent language. You know, the object-oriented code plus uh, the functional aspects. Correct. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks for having me.